Hello and thank you for joining us on the Monday edition of Journalist Hangout. I'm Ayodili Zubakun. Today on the program, President Buhari gives governors and leaders marching order over rising ethnic conflicts in parts of Nigeria as Vice President of Shibaju, Makinde promised to deal severely, severely with corporates of Oyo violence, move to avert reprisal attacks, bandit kidnapped 21 passengers on board bus of Niger State Transport Authority, and later on the show, Lagos Police Commissioner condemns molestation of Occupy Lekki protesters, others probe. I'll be hanging out with Babajide Koladi Otitoju and Mayo Akikmelu. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Thank you for staying with us. Ethnic tension is on the rise in Nigeria and something must be done quickly to douse it. Hence, President Muhammadu Buhari has called on governors, religious and traditional leaders, as well as other elected leaders across the country to assist the federal government in halting ethnic and religious clashes among communities. Indeed, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo and Governor Shei Makinde of Oyo State have promised to deal with corporates involved in violence that rocked Shasha Market in Ibado. Now the President is talking about Babajide, saying, look, it's not something that he can continue to keep quiet about. It's something that we need is direct intervention. And the President has spoken now. Yes, and um, um, it's a welcome development and not only did the president speak, the president's speech was followed by um, the decision of the Inspector General of Police to deploy a special team to Oyo State with the intention of reclaiming the post space and reinforcing security and confidence of the people in the police. So the, the IG called it um, intervention and stabilization, uh, stabilization force. So it is under the control of DIG, David Folawio, and uh, the intelligence and operational assets of the police are involved. Four units of police mobile force are going to your state operatives from the force intelligence bureau are going there as well and the uh, one operational and surveillance police helicopter from the police hair wing department uh, would also be deployed so we, uh, i'm particularly happy that um, at least we can have areas of surveillance has intervened officially in area surveillance mm -hmm. of the trouble spots especially in Igongo. Um, the Barakba area generally. We need to see the people causing the trouble. The forests are part of our country. Nobody has the right to cause trouble in any forest because this is in those forests that people are taken to when they are kidnapped. So we need the police to uh, do area surveillance and identify these criminals, these criminals are about to set our country ablaze because it is the tension generated by the fact that people get kidnapped on their farms, their means of livelihood get taken away, people get kidnapped, when they are kidnapped they pay ransom and they still get killed. That is what has pushed our nation to the edge now. And I remember Governor Nasir Erufai warned that we should not allow the activities of criminals to set us against one another. That's what we are seeing. That's what happened in Oyo State. An issue that a person trained from home could have undoed differently. You can see now it has led to uh, a violent mm -hmm. combustion with people killing one another. You dropped um, rotten uh, tomatoes in front of someone's uh, uh, shop. What does it take you to just clean the place up so that the, the pregnant woman will not be happy? Instead, you said, no, that you, are, that you can't find water to do it. And then that angered someone. But where we actually have leadership, market leadership, 
a conflict between two individuals, two individuals exchanging blows, should not lead to the sort of tension that we have. It just shows that we don't love ourselves in this mm. country. Mayor, yeah. looking at what is happening, why is Oyo State so um, um, peculiar right now? Yeah, I think um, we have to look at, you see that there is cause and effect. We are now discussing the effect. But what is the cause? What, it is because of the tension that is around there that caused the problem that is happening in Shasha Market. And it has to do with what I've started in the Parapa land. The kidnappings and the killings and all that. And that was why some of us believe that, yes, it is very bad what is going on in Barapa and a lot of other places. It is bad for that people cannot go to their farms and they will not be kidnapped. It is bad that people get kidnapped and they pay ransom. But we must not lose focus. In showing our anger, we must direct our anger to the people that we needed to use our anger to, which is the bandits that were doing those things. You know, in the course of the anger, people that are supposed to be from the ethnic stock of those bandits were being labeled and attacked. Everybody. You understand? Mm. We shouldn't be so. Because Yes, these people are from the bandits. There's no doubt about that. There are a lot of them in the Northwest. But we must concentrate on these bandits instead of trying to attack everybody because the, the reprisals will not be good for this country. We cannot afford it. We cannot afford it. And when it gets to a point, it, things will move so quickly, people may not be able to control it. Because if you remember, this is what led to the first civil war. The Nigerian Civil War, this is what led to the Nigerian Civil War. Some young soldiers decided that things were not going the right way, and they planned a coup. Unfortunately, most of the people that were killed were from a section of the country. And those people felt, oh, we're targeted. And they have their own counter coup. And after that, there was this killings, mob killings, and all that happened in the north. And they kept bringing people to the south. And one thing led to another. So we must be very careful. Let us concentrate. That, why I'm happy that though government should have done what they are doing now, mm. part of the problem with this government is that they just sit in Abuja as if they don't care. When there is a problem, instead of them to accept that problem and make efforts to solve that mm. problem, they close their eyes as if if they close their eyes well enough, the, the problem will just disappear. Because what they are doing now, is what they should have done so that there won't be need for a Sunday boat to go and do what they did. Yep. But they didn't do that. Mm. If, they are, if, they are, if they have done the necessary thing and said, oh, we, we recognize the fact that there is breakdown of law and order in the Barapa, there are a lot of people that are being kidnapped, we need to solve that problem. They didn't do that. And then self preservation is the first law of nature. So people now resorted to self help. And Which part is of dangerous. what is happening, Shasha, is the continuation of that self help. Because already, when you have this animosity against some people, when there are some things that you are supposed to settle, you understand, you read meanings to it, and it gets out of hand. Now, but actually, more than before, we are divided across ethnic lines. We are divided across everything. You can't tell somebody that, oh, we are both Nigerians. Maybe when we meet abroad, when we see, you know, the way we deal with each other, we don't say, oh, we are. We were so particularly about our distance, and I discovered that since the 2011 election, 2015, mm? 2015, uh -huh. so we've not done anything to heal <laughs> across, uh, you know, in terms of uh, 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 in terms of ethnic lines. We are more suspicious of each other, and I don't know how we can continue as a country like this. You know, the government has a lot to do, and. Um, um, I think it has reached a point now that we need to have a national conversation. I don't want to call it uh, maybe a confab or something, just a national conversation where everyone would be able to speak his mind and then concentrate on solutions. You see, no matter what you say about the last confab, there are some gains that we got out of it. 
there are some gains that came out of it. Even government um, decided to take some of their suggestions, you know, and uh, we are using it today. You know, even the idea of, say, for example, let me just use an example. The TSA was a suggestion made at the CONFAB. The idea of uh, um, school feeding was a suggestion made at the CONFAB. Now we're in a situation that is getting closer to how we were before the Civil War. Mm. In terms of the deep ethnic and, and, uh, animosities between the various uh, um, groups within our country. And it's about time that government found a way to bring people together, leaders across religious, tribal, and, uh, um, and professional divides. Let us talk about the problems that we are facing and find a solution or find solutions to those problems. Unless this kind of conversation, people must be adequately, the various stakeholders in our country must be adequately represented. Because there are some problems that have cropped up now that were not there before. Mm. So those ones will need the sort of solutions that you know, we, we that uh, you know had never been. The Rwanda situation. Mm. How do we learn to speak the Nigerian language? That I'm not going to be Hutu, I'm not going to be Yoruba or Igbo. That's difficult. Yes, because we, we are a bigger nation. That's difficult. We are a bigger nation, so, we are a bigger nation. so but um, the solution. The bigger nation. No, no. See, solution. No, see, a solution. It's a city. It's a city state. It's a small country. We it's can't. It's state. not possible in Nigeria. Let me tell you. There are states in Nigeria where there are up to 100 languages. Yeah. One state. You see a community, a different clan. This clan speaks, they are neighbors so close to one another, but they speak different languages. Go to Southern Kaduna, you understand what I'm saying. Town, different languages. So how do you, what worked for Rwanda may not work in Nigeria, mm -hmm. but we must make conscious efforts. So to, that to Yes, not that we, we just uh, borrow the ideas uh, wholesale. But I'm saying that let us even admit that we have problems. And how do we have a national conversation that will be geared towards solving some of these problems? There were some tensions that were created just before Basson John left office. And the idea of rotatory presidency came up. And that rotatory presidency was also supposed, that, policy, that principle was supposed to cascade down to yeah. the senatorial zones. Mm. Whereby, if from this zone, you, 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 you want an election know. to represent us, you know, for the senatorial election. You want an election to represent us. Mm. Automatically, another zone would, would take uh, the mantle the next time. It was supposed to cascade like that. I attended the consultative forum meetings that the Southern leaders had. But because of Obasan just uh, intention to get a third term, which uh, Rufai had, uh, officially announced in his, in his uh, book, because every person who worked with Obasan just pretended that there was no such plan. <laughs> but Rufai in his book actually was the first person to tell us that indeed there was a third term agenda. agenda. Mm. So, you know, because of that, every other thing that was suggested was thrown away. Was thrown away. You threw the baby uh, away with the bath water. Mm -hmm. We lost an opportunity there, but we still have a chance in the life of our nation to try to redress some of these problems. Tell people have been hearing uh, some uh, uh, comments like, "Oh, uh, government uh, uh, governors of the north should bring people, bring their people back home." Mm -hmm. Just because of an attack in just a, a small part of it, if it was now, let's even look at if it was something that spread across, you could say, ah, they don't want this uh, southern, southern people, they don't want us. But a clash over a misunderstanding in just a very tiny area, you now say they should bring everybody from the south. Why are people now using this, the social media has been a cost to our country? 
so-called citizen journalism. People are using it to spread hate. People are using it to stoke the embers of war in our country. They don't even, they don't even understand the consequences of what they are doing. They don't know. Some of them, you just see, you see someone who, who clearly does not know his left from his right that's why because he can use the phone. Mm -hmm. They are just posting all that's kinds why of things. The and government did was you talking see, about regulating this social media. No, did you see the, 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 um, the remarks by one young girl in, in an hijab? And he just uh, kind of showed that length hijab. Explaining what happened in that place. Yes, that. Um, Explaining Shashaka. what happened. I said, see, yes. that the, we do not need this kind of. That the person is even from Nigeria Republic. Now we are killing ourselves. Because of that? It, you know, it's the same thing that happened in Kano in 1995. Somebody from Cameroon. A Nigerian, an Igbo man fighting someone from Cameroon. And then if he smashed the guy on the ground, not that he died though, it led to an ethnic fight. It's not a Nigerian, no. Volatile. Yes. Yeah, so, because it's the deep city and the city that is causing it. And we cannot, because we don't have problems with each other. If you go to Agege, you will see about third, fourth generation where do those of ones Ausa go? Fulani that be living in Agege, where do those owns properties. Go? If you go to Diaraba, you will see third, fourth generation of our people that have been yes. living there. You will see a lot of Yorubas, a lot of Igbos living in Kano, living They're in Kano, living meet. everywhere. So why would people just think? Because you see, that's why I said we must not because of hunger or certain things that happen. We must look at the big picture and look at the interests of the Nigerian state. Because this Nobody thing that people are agitating, they are not people looking are at the consequences of what they are saying. Mm -hmm. If you way. say that, if you say the, if you say the house have because we are hungry that certain things that should not have happened, happened in Barapala. So all house have are guilty and they should leave. What about the Yorubas and the Igbos that have invested billions in the North? What do you want them to do? They can't even live. They can't, it's, <laughs> it's even senseless for people to come up with that idea. To, to you can't idea. simply say every uh, so uh, it doesn't make sense. A whole uh, they, oh, they don't even like have the right. They too are victims. Uh, they too are victims. Yeah, Meti Allah itself, not the uh, Kautal Hore, because I don't consider those ones Meti Allah. Even their comments, their comments, their always, own, their own comments are always, always meant to cause trouble. trouble yeah. Now. Even Mehati Allah is a victim of criminal elements yeah. hanging in the uh, forest and claiming to be headsmen. Yes. They are victims. They also their cattle. Yes. yes. They are also their cattle. In the north, these same elements. You know, I don't understand why once someone comes in the, in the north, they call them bandits. That's what we call them. As soon as they cross the bridge in Lokoja, they will call them headsmen. Something is wrong with us. <laughs> Once they cross the Muritala Bridge in, uh, in, uh, in Kogi, then they become headsmen. A bandit is a bandit. bandit. It's, it's a criminal. Let's call them who they are. We don't care where they come from. And no Nortana should defend a criminal. Correct. Once a criminal, you this is a criminal, Isolate don't defend him. If he catches you, he will not show us. sympathy. Yes. I've mentioned it before. In, Jiga, in, uh, in Tarapa State, my own friend was kidnapped. And he was full and he was kidnapped. He said, the people who kidnapped me are my people. But they showed no mercy. They told him, they said, Kai, you look chubby. We can smell money. They were telling him, this is not fiction. Just yeah. I don't want to mention his name. Yeah. In the end, they had to pay millions of, uh, of Naira in, in ransom. When the criminal, a Yoruba criminal, a Yoruba bandit, a Yoruba kidnapper, or an, or an Igbo kidnapper, or a Flani kidnapper catches you. He does not want to know where you come from. No, no, absolutely. They, 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 are, they don't go to show mercy to you. Mm, so we must, this, we this, must face this, the criminals this, amongst Kasha. us. I've no. thought attacking innocent people. Navdak is just, you know, crying out that the influx of psychopathic drugs, you know, fueling terrorism and insecurity. Because ordinary people, we've said it several in this program, you cannot be behaving the way those bandits are behaving, and you know you can't be in your right senses. You see, one of the major problems that we have in Nigeria right now that we are not looking at is the issue of drugs. Mm. Our youths are hooked on drugs, both male and female. Mm. If you if you look around and see now, it is if 
for you to say you smoke loud or you smoke Colorado. It is ip. You will see a lady believing that smoking weed and smoking loud. Now they've even graduated from normal weed. They believe that that is not good enough. Mm. Now they've moved oh, to elementary. Yes, mm. elementary. So, they've moved to other things that have been laced with so many things. Mm. And they take all kinds of things. And that is the problem with us because when you have a lot of youths Arizona. who are not yes who are not employed and who are hooked on drugs, there is no way they will not take into criminality. And they won't show mercy. Yes, there is no way they will do that. And when they when they when they when they operate, they cannot show mercy because mm. they are not they are not women mm. at that time. Do you know that some time ago, um, a trailer load of tramador mm. was hijacked? on his way to Sambisa Forest. Hmm. A trailer load of Tramador. They were going to give it to those people. Because uh, how do you convince an individual to simply strap the, um, the IED. Uh, 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 explosive, uh, I mean, uh, uh, the IED belts around himself, knowing that he's going to die? Hmm. To brainwash the person, ah, you need to work yes, on Yes, you need to work on meetings. them. That person totally brainwashed. He does not even know what he's doing. He can't explain his actions. That is the thing. And because of the nature of their business, you know, when they kidnap people, they have to take them far into the bush mm. to be able to make, them to make sure that it's not Wear easy them for them to be followed. Mm. So you need something to pop you up to be able to do that. Because they work, if, you, show if, no you, if you hear stories of people that have been kidnapped, Sometimes they walk up to five, six hours. Mm. Sometimes more than that. Constantly walking. Yes, into the deep forest. And if so you cannot you need... walk, if you are tired, you can't walk there, they will shoot yeah. you. So you need something, you need to be hooked on something to be able to do a lot of things. Do that you know do. what these Asians have done? Now that we have banned Tramador, they simply changed the name. Wicked people. They changed the name. So when you see it, you will not know that it's actually Tramador. The customs made some seizures recently. They've changed the name. It's Tramador, but they gave it a yeah, different name. Them. Because these people, even the, the, the right um, dosage of, of Tramador, they can increase it and give you 200 M hmm. instead of maybe 50. So you can imagine anybody ingesting 200 M. Tramador is a very M effective pain reliever, yes. Yes, pain reliever, but it also does other things beyond mm -hmm. uh, it will knock you out. You, you, you won't even uh, think of uh, tomorrow. All right. We'll take this break. When we come back, we'll talk more. It's still journalist and guys. We'll be right back. Please stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. <clears throat> May we not embark on a journey the day that the road is famished is a common prayer by the Yoruba people in the southwest of Nigeria. But some travelers in Niger states were not that lucky. 18 passengers on board one of the buses of the Niger State Transport Authority were kidnapped by bandits. They were traveling from Kontagura to Mena, the state capital, where their bus was attacked. Babajide, this is not the story all over the country right now. I told somebody earlier that it's going to be very difficult to, you know, to get me out of Lagos under any guys right now. If I'm not sure that the coast is clear, I'm telling you, it's not. You cannot even sure the it's coast is clear. Hmm? So the best is not to go anywhere. There's no no way by which you can know the yeah. coast is clear, except you have a juju by which you can see the road. That juju will show you that okay, today this road will not come. Nobody. <laughs> They can strike any time. Even on this Lagos by the Expressway, mm. yes. people have been kidnapped. Yes. People have been kidnapped. There were some expatriates that were kidnapped there the other day. How did people yeah. know that those foreigners were? Mm. Narrowing mm. down the number of times. The truth That's... is, the truth is, okay, this one now, this road, where these ones were kidnapped, they said it's a shock to the residents because that portion of the highway, that Tegna Highway, was considered safe, relatively safe. So this uh, abduction caught everybody by surprise. They were not expecting it. Which means even areas that you thought were safe, yeah, they can change their minds at any point and go there. You see, the, the truth is, 
we've been talking about these local governments, three local governments in Niger State, where bandits are running riot. Almost every day, you will hear something about those three local governments. Muya, Rafi, and Shiroro local governments. In Niger? Yes. Is that of her? Every time. This is what is happening. Every time. We've not been able to stop them. They've killed soldiers. They've killed civilians. And what is particularly painful is that about one kilometer to the the location where this happened. We have the Lugard uh, Memorial Cemetery. And soldiers are in that area. But these guys still got away with, their, with the crime. They got away. Even if that didn't happen, given that these three local governments, we've been talking about it all the time, the people have been falling victim all the time, what is difficult in securing just those three local governments? I know that the governor of the state went to meet the president the other day and asked for more security um, uh, uh, operatives. But if bandits still continue to attack those local governments, then something, I mean, something is wrong. We have an obligation to protect our people. It's not about uh, this thing, uh, loyalty to the party or this. We have an obligation to protect our people. It's as simple as that. What's the essence and of a party that cannot even you know, provide security? No, 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 to no, to no, no, no. It's a government must provide security, not That's even the job of the party. Not even the job of the party. So that issue is even, uh, that's not an issue. The government in office must provide security for the people. Basic. Yes. No, no, that's the so what is government. the governor, what is the governor of Niger State doing? Abulolo. What is Abulolo doing? The governor of Niger State. Can't he get, he's in the same party with the president. Can't he get the president to be for security in that area. In fact, passengers. some of them were they were they were they, they are more than eighteen. They are more than eighteen, and they they also killed three persons. But that that's not in the news. Some people were complaining the other day that ah, Abu Lolo went to Nasarawa State when uh, they they killed the chairman of the APC in that state, but that he has not visited these local governments in the state where people are routinely being kidnapped by bandits and a lot of them killed. There is a huge problem, refugee problem in, in, uh, in uh, Niger State as we speak. Niger State. Many people are running to areas safe. Maybe tomorrow we we'll publish pictures. You will see people, men and uh, old women, children, you know, with their loads on their head, tra trekking several kilometers just to get to a safe place. Bandits want to take over our country. We have to realize that. That's this what is getting out of hand. Because you see why it's getting out of hand is because this is still the fallout of what happened in Libya. Because in, in Libya, you know, when Gaddafi was forcefully removed from, mm. from power in Libya, a lot of ammunition became available to bandits. There were a lot of fighters, especially the Tuareg fighters, that went to fight in Libya. When they left Libya, they were the ones that were co creating problems in Mali. A lot of these people, they have ammunition, they don't have things to do, they've taken to banditry. And they are the ones in our country, most of them are foreigners, and the only difference is that they just keep moving down to where they could get. And the easiest thing and to do... And they are conniving with some the of the easiest, yes, yes, the easiest way to, to raise money is through kidnapping. Because it's more, it's more profitable than arm robbery. Because in arm robbery, you don't even know how much you are going. You cannot determine what you are going to get. Yes. But in kidnapping, you can determine what you are going to get. And I don't understand why government is just, that's why I say it's the same thing. It's just, they will not, until things want to go out of hand, that is when they will react to those things. Each governor in this country, every governor collects huge amount of money as security votes every month. 
they call it security votes because they believe that there are going to be security issues that they needed to handle. That is why they don't give account of it. Because they acknowledge, the state acknowledge that there will be security issues that the governors need to handle. Exactly. What do they do with their security votes? Because you are not providing this security for the people. It's, it's not only, it's, it, in fact, there was a time, you know, it went down a little in Southwest. Because we're not, we're lucky that it's not, because they came, the, the population of these bandits, they don't move for us behind every day. But kidnapping happens everywhere. On the on, on expressway, in fact, the um, Bini, Bini, Ore. Bini Ore expressway, they kidnap people us, every day. Yes. Every day. Every day, mm. and collect ransom. Every single day. So, how can we, how can any How many government, of them can even be reported? Yes, how can any government everything. abdicate responsibilities and fail to, to protect people? That is the primary duty of government, protection of lives and property. That is the primary duty of government. So, if they fail, that means the government has failed. These people cannot afford to overrun this government. And they cannot just be stronger than the Federal Republic of Nigeria. If they like, they should go and get their surface to help Mr. or to go and do anything. But then we can't operate, you can't allow them to be operating freely the way they are now. Without, if we want to do that, then we must be ready to work hard. The way it is now, especially in northern Nigeria, <clears throat> it's going to be tough to dislodge them. From where they are, except we want to just sit here and be deceiving ourselves. These guys are running riots in Kasina, in Sokoto. Now, the only states of the Northwest where they are not active is Kano and Jigawa. Outside of those states, all of the seven states, the remaining five states of the uh, Northwest, these guys are running like riots. That. They are killing people, and they they show no remorse at all. They show no we remorse. Fact, we beg to negotiate with them, and, that's and they will still come back and still they, they get they the show no remorse. They are ready to kill police. They are ready to kill the army. They are ready to kill the people. That's why you can see that Governor Rufa is saying, "Look, I will not negotiate with these people. They are not even Muslims." He said it. They don't. They don't even read the Quran. A yeah. lot of them are enemies anyway. Yeah. This, uh, this criminal yeah. uh, people, Lord, they are enemies. They don't believe in Quran. They don't believe. They are not Christians. They are not. They are not practicing Muslims. So, so you can't. Reason you can't leverage on the Holy Quran to beg them to stop. Mm. No, they don't. They don't believe it. They have no time for that, you know. And they don't want to stop. You 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 offer amnesty to them. They still go back to it. Because the money they make, because it pays them to do so, it, it, it's, so it's huge. Money. So we have so no they prefer a life of a life of criminality. Them. They can't hold uh, the entire look country. Look at Ghana. Ransom. Look at Ghana. That one in uh, Tewasi, Ghana, in uh, in uh, in, uh, in uh, Benue State. The governor gave him amnesty, and he said, "Okay, I'm, I won't be killing people." He went back to it. Then. When he see and the soldiers were looking for him, they couldn't get hold of him. Nobody knew where he was. Nobody was using jazz for them. When they didn't know how to stop him from killing people, kidnapping people, actually the Casino area, that was uh, where he concentrated his efforts. Then the leaders went and met the governor. Please, will you agree to give Ghana another amnesty? People like uh, Senator Suswam. Who are also involved because that's the senator from uh, his area. Mm. They gave him a second amnesty. And then they came to the stadium where he, he was to renounce the thing. Then, and as they were leaving the place, they were going to take him to meet the governor, the Nigerian Army struck. The argument was that one, the army was not informed about the second amnesty. amnesty. Second, second, the army said they had never had where somebody got amnesty twice. <laughs> so the army under the leadership of Tukuru Yusuf Burate decided to do what they felt was right to their enemy because he had killed so many soldiers. Was recruited. Yes, on the way they waited. They blocked the way. And then they served the Tewase justice. I'm not supporting extrajudicial killing in any way. I'm just giving the background. Look at, the soldier, look at the soldier who is supposed to get married in three weeks, the Air Force man, yeah. that uh, bandits killed. Do you think any soldier will show mercy to a bandit? 
All right. right. When, when that kind of thing happens. Okay, we'll go for this final break. When we come back, we'll talk more. Still, journalists and guys. We'll be right back. Thank you for staying with us. And finally, the plan to occupy Lekki Tollgate protests of Saturday may have been quelled, but the day did not pass without some drama. A disturbing video of some arrested protesters, including ex comedian Debo Adebayo, popularly called Mr. Macaroni, strip battling naked by police, is still causing ripples in the policy. The state police commissioner, Akim Odumuso, has ordered a probe into the incident and vowed to punish corporates. What's really happening? Baba Jide, I saw that video and <laughs> <laughs> it's... I saw it and Macaroni was looking really sober. Anyone stripped of dignity in this manner will look so bad. Yeah, yeah. right. Can you see? You know? Like because at that point, he will, be he, he will be asking, where will this end? End. Hmm. He, 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 he would even be thinking maybe they want to go and kill him. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. All kinds of thoughts will be running through Mr. Macaroni's mind that, ah, why should they do this to me? Uh, uh, strip me. Uh, oh, uh, to, Thoroughly to, humiliated. to my loins. They stripped him to his loins, his boxers showing, and then um, it's... Uh, no it's social also, distancing. It, yes, you can see it's even sweating. Yeah, it was it's the sweating. possibility of uh, getting COVID here? Yes. No, because the heat, you can see both. Uh, look at this boy. Look at it. It's actually tight together. No, no, but of course they, no. they will not tie it. Uh, no, 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 it's they will not tie it. Because they are in the inside a damn hole. And but that boy it, looks like they tied that one because they, they must have felt some of them were hiding criminals. Uh, uh, Indeed, on that day, passers by were being arrested, you know, on the day. Just going on your own, you know, just being arrested. The police uh, realize their mistake. No matter what you want to do, um, you can arrest people, but you have no right to dehumanize them yes, yes. in the way yes. yes. We have bandits terrorizing us across the country. Yes, you are not dehumanizing the, 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 bandits in this way. It's innocent yeah. people who are not carrying yes. guns that you are uh, to, uh, that you dehumanizing. And the problem is, in these days of uh, information technology, this video will have been seen across the world. Yes. Yes. You this can see his be. head bowed, uh, feeling the pangs of humil humiliation. Hmm. His head is bowed in, uh, in submission to the... Because of what? You say the police have... We, are, we cannot ask police not to do their jobs, but they have to do it the right way. Hmm. It is wrong of you to dehumanize a German citizen for your exercising his right. I don't think that is, that is acceptable. But I'm happy that the police commissioner are you sure he's not playing to the gallery? Even if he's playing to the gallery. Sure? No, even, even if he's playing, he's playing to the gallery. gallery he has, he has acknowledged. That it. He has acknowledged that what happened shouldn't have happened. Yes. That was why he said they were going to investigate it and bring up those, mm. those uh, responsible. Not in the out of it. Yes. Mm. And because even those who are involved, they are, they are, they are, some of them are members of the civil rights, civil society. Mm. They will be able to stay on the case to make sure that it's not swept under the carpet. But the fact that the right. police commissioner can acknowledge that... That it was wrong. Yes, it was wrong. That they should not have been treated that way. Mm. It's a big step forward. You know, Before, that day, police will do this, they will like, and they will get away with it. You know, on that day... Why must they remove your shirts? Why must, if you are arrested... No, it's, the, the, it's, a, it's the same mentality of to doing things the way you used to be done. Yeah. So you know, when you, when, you get to, to when you get to police stations, I don't know why they will remove your shirt, they will remove your... I think the belt is for you not to commit suicide or something. Mm, yes, belt. But they will remove your shirt. It's, 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 it's a part of the colonial thing to dehumanize you and humiliate make you to... to humiliate you or make you to be submissive. But they should, they should not have done that. It's not even good PR for them. No, it's not good You PR. understand? Because, mm. yes, government, if you notice, the Attorney General of Lagos State came out and said, yeah. oh... The people have the right to protest, but this time you cannot protest because there is a law in Lagos that people must not congregate up in to, public places up, up to 50 to, people yes, and all that and all that. But so, they were not up to 50. That's the problem. They were not up to 50. 
<laughs> that was the thing. So, in, in arresting There them, was no time that they found them. Fact, out I think what, what, what I didn't like, what I did die is that government, you see, sometimes, maybe the police commissioner will learn from this, they have to look at perception is everything. You understand? If they had arrested these people and they didn't put them in all those black maria, they put them in a place, take them, you understand? Mm. Maybe detain them for some time, you understand? Take them to one place and then they free them. They would have been able to curb that thing that they wanted to do at that time without giving Should themselves this PR that, that, they, that they have now. Because the PR problem they have is that you cannot demonize people like this. They've not really done anything wrong. No. The only thing is just that they, they said... And they were not violent. Yes, and they were not violent. So they've not really done anything that, that necessitates you to demonize them the way they did. Mm. But I think, oh, it, yes, something may not come out of it, but we, it is important for us to insist that the investigation that the police commissioner ordered Promised. Yes, yes that promise. No, but my own, my own concern is when the protesters. people decided that they are going to protest against SARS, it's because of some of the activities of SARS, like mm -hmm. the humane treatment of uh, people, suspects, mm -hmm. that SARS had been notorious for. Now, if we say, uh, they are saying, arrest me, a lot of them were even begging to be arrested. Look at that mm -hmm. woman. That woman walked up and said, arrest me. And then they did. So the thing is, for people, that it's a available offense. Sign. Yeah, it uh, is. They are not bandits who are it harassing is. people in our forest. They are not bandits. So it's a available offense. Yes, the fear was there that the protest could be hijacked. But those people in this R the IRS um, um, truck mm. are different from the one. Because that other one, we had macaroni, it was a private, it was uh, a downfall. Yes, uh, the, the arrested people at different times. It's not at okay. once that they... Arrested. They were there throughout and they were making arrests. As people were coming, you know, they were making arrests. So the police uh, commissioner in the statement said, in as much as the command is resolute in enforcing all laws in Lagos State, it will not deviate from the standard operating procedure of the law in discharging its duties. The police and other security agents will not allow any violence and breaking out of law and order in any part of the state. But protests, one thing like well, we agree saying that they should not allow one thing breakdown of law people and order. People are saying that protests mm. should not be criminalized. That this government, they, they are they protests of protests. Yes. No, no, no. But, 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 but you see, no, that, the, the, but why I don't agree fear, with that? No, fear, no, it's the fear because the fear Lagos, that could Lagos lost over one trillion. Is the, the, last, the last, the last, uh, None the last. None of us has, expected what happened. No, but no, no. Yes, we, we supported them now. We supported it, but we didn't expect. We cannot, you know, a state cannot lose. It will take Lagos State so many, many years to be able to get over that what happened. Mm. And we know that any, in fact, it's not only in Nigeria, all over the world. When you are doing protests, if you are not careful, who lumps will jack it mm. and use it to achieve that? I mean, even in America, that's why you will see the reason Black they are Lives Matter, and you will see people looting shops. Yeah, they were looting shops. So the reason These they are, are not the own, people protesting. The reason, yes, the reason they are the own, even degenerated was when it was time. Government had agreed to your demands. Leave the road. They were advised leave the road so that you can now give government timelines, allow government to begin to implement. They refused. Mm. They yeah. refused. Instead, they expanded the demands. You know? So that was why, at that point, all those agbiros who live from hand to mouth, who live by the day, mm. how do they then begin to, how do they, they survive? How do it's they survive? Fast. Those boys, let me tell you, if they don't work for three days, there will not be peace in this then there are other, Then there are other interest groups mm. that also have their own agenda. You understand? That day, because there are some other people that I jack. No, we are their politicians. I jack the protests and use it to achieve their. So the, no, no government will, based on that experience, mm. will allow breakdown of law and order. But in maintaining peace, it is not right to dehumanize Nigerian citizens. All right, I want to thank you, Mayor Akinpo. Thank, thank you, you for much. your contribution and the message himself, Bikio Babaji de Kolade Tuju. Thank you for always being there. Thanks. And that's all on Journalist and Gas today. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. Remember, we have our Sunday edition that runs between 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m., just two hours every Sunday now. Journalist and Gas, 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. We're on YouTube at youtube.com slash News Nigeria. I'm Ayodili Uzubaku. See you tomorrow and God bless Nigeria.